You found yourself on another episode of Locked On Bulls. The Bulls lose a third straight game after being one game below 500, like me and Pat told you was going to happen. History keeps repeating itself. Sisyphus, as Pat once described before Adam and Mean stole it live on air. Uh, also, it was Stacy. One of them took it. I'm not gonna lie. Bucci Mane was my thing. I mean, there was a lot of that. We're not gonna get into that. We're intro. Shut up. Uh, last shot by DeMar DeRozan, which was terrible shot. And can the Bulls even hold on to the ninth seed as the Atlanta Hawks tonight beat the Boston Celtics? We're going to get into all that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat the Designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears Podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central YouTube pages and podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars, Pat. Um, I don't know. Listen, I'd rather talk about Diddy's house being raided today than the Chicago Bulls game. I mean, hey. listen, I thought that's why Diddy left. He saw the Bulls playing the Wizards and was like, "Listen, I got to get to an island." <laughs> 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 I assumed. Is there something else going on with Diddy that I'm missing? I thought um, that it was because of the Bulls game that Diddy, yeah, yeah, ran from reason, his house. A- out the back door. There's a reason why pause has now been replaced with no Diddy. No so, Diddy. I mean, there's something with that. But we'll, we'll discuss that at a later day. That may be a view from the Bleachers topic we may go ahead and get into. Um, but, hey, bro, the Bulls on the three-game losing streak, man. How you feeling, bro? I mean, listen, is this not the Bulls team that we said was, was going to show up? Yeah, I mean, like, I guess a couple games, uh, they lost a few more games this month. Than I thought they would, but I said they'd finish around, you know, 500, nine and seven, somewhere in there. They're going to finish a little bit under. Like, I'm not surprised by this Bulls team anymore. There's no shock for me with this Bulls team. There's no shock for me that they lost to the Washington Wizards now. And realistically speaking, anybody can get beat any day, as we'll talk about in, in that final topic. Boston blew a 30 point lead to the Atlanta Hawks today, which I don't even know how you do that, right? Like, there are worse losses out there tonight, but. Boston is at the top of the standings, and we're where we deserve to be. We we are a struggling team trying to figure out what the heck, um, what, what pieces make sense to be on this team next year. And at this point, if you feel like it's any of the players over the age of 25, I just want to know what kind of uh, marijuana you're getting from your dispensary because I need to visit because that is some good uh, that's some good stuff if you think that anybody on this team over the age of 25 should be here. Yeah, I mean, I, at this point, when it comes down to it, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about it later on as well, but, like, yeah, it's just it, – I said it over on Central. I said it like this. DeMar DeRozan has played well enough over his time period with the Bulls to deserve a second con- – another contract. That doesn't mean it has to be with the Bulls, though. And I think that that comes by – DeMar DeRozan, I would say, inflates the Bulls' win total by five to eight games, if not more than that, every single season. And you said this at one point. Uh, if DeMar is to walk away, that gives you a time and opportunity to look to see which one of these players really does step up. And if they don't, all right, you're going to be bad next season. And then maybe you keep your pick instead of going to the San Antonio Spurs. But losing a game like this against a Washington Wizards team that besides Jordan Poole was basically playing with a lot of third stringers and G League players looking for the next their contract next season, they outworked the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. By a considerable margin, they wanted it more. Because, you know, I, I, I hate when people say play down to the competition. Because when you say play down, that almost takes away the onus of the other team coming in and playing with energy. They, I don't think the Bulls played down. I think they got outworked. I think they got completely outworked by the Washington Wizards today. Yeah, listen, the, the Wizards came out. They got out on a, was it, 15 to, to 0 run to off. start the game off. You, yep. You're fighting your way back in it the entire time. Um, you had your first lead in the third quarter and it was 66 to 63. And then you immediately gave it back. And listen, I I don't care 
what the game is, who you're playing against, who you're going up against. When you have five to six minute offensive scoring droughts, you will lose. We saw the Bulls have a couple of those in this game. And it is, it, it's the most concerning. I'm not going to lie. It's one of the most concerning things in basketball right now to me that the Chicago Bulls can do it multiple times in a game. Just have complete scoring. In an NBA where it's not like teams are sitting here dying to play defense against you. Like literally, uh, uh, friggin' Adam Silver sitting here looking around like, we're going to have to force some stuff to try and bring defense back into the game. And only the Chicago Bulls can't find a way to go on a scoring run versus, I mean, literally some dudes that have played basketball a little bit longer in the NBA than me and you have. Yeah, I mean, like, it's 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 sad to see this team in the state that it's in. I, I think there are a couple of bright spots from this season that you can point to, but that's it. And yeah, I mean, the play in, the playoffs, whatever it's going to be, Okay, let's get it. Let's get <laughs> no diddy, but let's get it in. Let's get out and, let, and let's get it over with. Yeah, I mean, like that's that's what this all comes down to, because there is no miracle run here. I heard DeMar DeRozan after the game talk about we got to lock in these last 10 games. Last 10. <laughs> that's that's when we're locking in last 10 games. We're locking in like what was this 20 games ago, 30 games ago, 40 games ago. My what, thing what? is, is what what in this team? in the last three years to show that this team has an ability to lock in for 10 games. The Pat Bev run. That was still not locked in for 10 games, bro. How many of those games were we still frustrated with down the stretch? Of the- yeah, we went 14 to nine. Don't get me wrong, but we were still very, fu- they, they, it's not like we saw this team play 10 games in a row. We're just like, boom, we got it. That no, was even some, some think, questionable I games. I don't think we lost to nobody that we was like, you shouldn't have lost that game. That's true. But, now that's I think true. all the games we lost, we were like, well, you know, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't know, bro. Like, at this point, like the situ, the lack of situational awareness by Demar Derozan, I mean, uh, by uh, by Billy Donovan, it just it, at this point, like Andre, when when Andre Drummond was on the court today, we had a plus minus of plus nine, we had a defensive rating of sub 100, like, and then you you just like I, I get it, Nikola Vucevic had 16 rebounds, but this was not one of those games where to me you just have to give Nikola Vucevic just 26 minutes because you're just used to giving him 26 minutes. Yeah, Drum should have been out there more down the stretch of that game. I listen, I I thought this in the third quarter. I don't know if this is the case, but it's how it felt watching the game. They know what they can get if they don't make the play. Don't be surprised if over these last 10, a lot of decisions don't don't make sense. Don't be surprised if over these last 10, a lot of these decisions, we just go, are we trying to lose? Like, are we trying? Because watching that third quarter over the six-minute scoring drought after they took the lead, it was like, I don't think they want to win this game. Like, and the, the funny thing is, too, is that uh, that five minutes of that scoring drought, the war, the Wizards, yeah, they scored a couple more points than the Bulls, but they couldn't score for a while there either. The either. was still only four. It was still four. Yeah. You still had an opportunity to get back in the game. Just it's 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 despicable. That's what we're seeing right now, bro. Despicable. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, like I said, if. If Diddy only had one channel on uh, that airplane, he was not watching this. Yeah, you know I mean that's all I'm saying. Like, have they found Diddy yet? Have they found? Him? I think he's on an island. I think that ain't that. Yeah, I know they grounded him? his plane, but like, but he left his sons because his sons were at the house. They got they got handcuffed. <laughs> you escaped to the island and you left your sons <laughs> at the house. Hey man, listen when you when you're dealing with the diddler, you can't trust them. Yeah, you know I mean like you kind of. You got to watch yourself, dog, when you're dealing with this is this is absolutely turned into a Batman, uh, <laughs> a Batman crime scene, bro. bro so you got to watch crazy, yourself when you're bro. dealing like this, with the this, diddler, bro. This lit- literally is the plot of a, of a movie, bro. Like it's somebody gave Diddy the word that they were about to raid his joint and he just dipped out randomly to an island. Bro, he probably pulled a lever that was just like T.D. Jake's face. <laughs> <laughs> he got swallowed up to yeah. the island. Is that what yeah, you exactly. said? And a and a hole in the floor opened and he just fell through. It's just T D Jake's face. <laughs> what? I gotta get up out of here. He's gotta wrap his verse to get like the, the lever to pop out. That's you know, the sun won't shine forever, but as long as we hit it, we might as well shine together. 
Food swallowed, swallowed up. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, oh, DeMar DeRozan God. makes a takes a last second shot that to me perfectly encapsulates what this season has been for the Chicago Bulls. We're going to talk about that, but first we're going to get into our, this message from our sponsor and that's Prize Picks. Uh, Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on 26 player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's demon time on Prize Picks. Hey, yo. You can now win up to 100 times okay. your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Demon and Goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play prize picks scores marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts you can now win up to 100 times your money with just as little as four correct picks you want to play alongside some of prize picks favorite players like rapper meek mill um never mind and comedian andrew schultz you can now find community plays under the promo tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in prize picks community each week whoa <laughs> go to prospects.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prospects.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for first deposit match up to $100. <laughs> the demons and goblins over there with me. <laughs> oh, God, this stuff oh, writes man. itself. That hey, listen, that ad turn takes a whole new meaning. The demons goblins with Meek Mill. Damn, yo, no diddy. Um, no diddy, bro. <laughs> bro, DeMar DeRozan, the last shot of this game. So there were, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure the chat will correct me. There, there was over five seconds left on the clock. Yeah. DeMar DeRozan takes it, doesn't even pass all the way half court. When he when he hoists the shot up, there's still almost two seconds on the clock. Io DeSumo and Kobe White were wide open, or could have got wide open. Eh, they're I both better three. They're, no, Kobe was wide open, bro. But, now, but his man was time. there. His, it was a his, long his, pass. They could have closed out. Yeah, he could have But, closed. like, that shot. The shot was bad, though. Why that? Why'd you go with that shot? <laughs> of all the things, why'd you go with that shot? Listen, it's a bad shot. Uh, that's all there is to say about it. And, and he went with that shot. Why? Because that's what DeMar is. That's who DeMar is. DeMar is going to take the last shot. I don't know if it's an ego thing for him. I don't know if it like is a, because we, we, we're not going to see him give up that last shot. And I get it. Kobe White was two for 11 from the three point line, but Kobe White still can shoot three pointers. Nobody thinks that he can't shoot the three. I would assume it's been red hot from the three point line and, we didn't see him be able to go out there and and uh, uh, get an opportunity for that shot. Like, I just, I, I don't know, man. Like, that was a half-court heave. That, listen, I don't know if Kobe would have been in a better position. I don't know if Iowa would have been in a better position. I think both of them would have gotten closed out on. Um, and it's still a miracle shot or a prayer of a shot. But at least it's a prayer of a shot in a range that one of those guys can hit versus a one-legged running pull-up mid uh, uh, mid court three. I, do you practice that shot? And when DeMar do you practice, practice that shot? I, I can see DeMar practicing that shot. Just in the gym? Yeah, just I can see DeMar practicing that, that shot. I don't know, just bro. Him, just him and Gilbert Arenas, the only two players to practice that shot. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think that this game comes down to that shot. I don't think that this... Yeah. You know, changes anything because of that shot. I, if you make that shot, are we sitting here maybe a little bit more excited? Sure, but bad game overall. And that shot pretty much encapsulates why it was a bad game. I mean, that was it, it was a low IQ, not really assessing what the other options were there. And even if you did assess them, you assumed that you at half court on one leg was the better of the two options. And it almost went in. Yeah, you know I mean, like, so I don't know. It's it, it was <laughs> like it, it could have banked in, and we're sitting here having a completely different conversation. Like, I, I no, it's still a stupid shot. Everything's stupid about everything was just dumb. This whole this game was dumb. The play was dumb. The coaching was dumb. Everything was dumb. This was a dumb ass game. I'm sorry. They can find me. Like, I, I, I'm over it, bro. I'm. This was just one of those games where it's just like all jokes aside, like uh, 
from coaching, the inept two coaching, the players playing like they didn't want it. Everything was just, it came to this game. The reason why I said it encapsulates the season for the Chicago Bulls, because, yeah, the Bulls could have won this game. There's so many things that could have went different to, yeah. to win this game, just like with the Bulls season. There's so many things that could have went different to give the Bulls a different outlook on the season. And guess where both things ended up? In the trash, because it's just been trash. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Listen, it, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't change what the season is. It doesn't change who this team is. And, and hearing DeMar DeRozan go, you got to lock in for the last 10 games of the season doesn't change anything to me. What run do you think you're going on here? These are these are seven-game series. Like, even if you get to the playoffs, it would be very surprising if you knock off the number one seed Boston Celtics. I mean, you, you think about even right back on that, the, I, I compared it when I was talking about the Bulls being a legit playoff team, and I did give the caveat of you got to kind of go on a run during this week. Um, they did not. <laughs> they they went on a run the other way. They ran away from it. Um, but if you were to go on a run, yeah, you know I mean, like I said that maybe you could have some something symbolic here with being an eighth seed going up against the Boston Celtics one if you can have a competitive series. But that... Bulls team had pride that Bulls team with Derrick Rose and Ben Gordon and listen they they weren't the better team but they cared about what they put on the floor every single night they cared about the product of play that they threw on the floor every single night I not to say that everybody's that way but I can't sit here and tell you that the front office and the coaching staff are that way Maybe DeMar's that way. Maybe Kobe's that way. I would assume that they are. Io's that way. But it, I mean, like, you you look at the vibes that you get from Billy Donovan at this point. It just feels like, let's get this thing over with. I'm trying to get back to Florida. There's March Madness on tonight. Iowa's got a heck of a game going on here tonight. I got to get home and watch that. Like, it, the Bulls feel like when you get into, like, the ninth inning of a baseball game that's, like, seven to nine, and they're just like, I'm calling everything a strike. I got dinner reservations, bro. <laughs> it's 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 such a just sad place with the state where this team is now. And and don't get me wrong, they've played, you know, with above five hundred percent win percentage since December and all that good stuff. But ultimately, this team just needs some clarity. It needs some moves, and it needs some major changes. And I hope that AK is ready and prepared to to answer some difficult questions. And He's been so apt to keep everything together, right? We we still don't know how much longer Billy Donovan's here. We don't know what he signed that the contract extension for, right? We know that that, that this team wants to stay that's competitive. Still the craziest thing in the world, that's, bro. Man. That's one of the craziest yeah. things that have happened in we all of Chicago. Have no sports. idea. He's been, when Billy he's been on the contract extension for two years, and we still don't know what it is. No clue, bro. No clue. It, I, I I fully believe it ends when he gets in the front office. I really believe that. I think he's going to be in the front office for the Bulls. I think he's going to end up being a GM when Mark Eversley leaves eventually. And that is when he's going to be. And then we're going to be talking about. Uh, well, I guess you can't make a, a, a slogan out of that. I was going to say act, act, bead. But no, no I, don't, I don't know. I don't think that works. AKBD. That sounds like a gang, actually. Be careful. Let's call, let's call it baked because that's what that front office would be. Is call it baked. <laughs> B A K D baked. No diddy, but would that mean that AK's in between Billy? D Never mind. Well, hey man, we appreciate oh, y'all. Lord for, uh, have mercy. Tuning in and rocking with us. Uh, we got to talk about can the Bulls hold on to this ninth seed, which seems like they're getting to a point where this is going to get very interesting. Uh, especially with Atlanta pulling off a, a, a win, uh, now sitting a, a game behind the Bulls, or improving game I should, a game behind the Bulls in the loss column, which is one that you should be paying attention to. But uh, before we do that, we got to tell you guys all about Better Help. Better Help is, uh, th this next segment I should say is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes we all need that opportunity just to get something off our chest big or small, certain things can really start to get to you, no diddy. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to tell you about something I really feel passionately about. You might even be thinking about the same thing, and that is getting some help from the therapy that BetterHelp can provide. I mean, 
Here's the biggest thing. Sometimes you want to sit there and you, you want to deal with our day-to-day -day struggles with the Chicago Bulls, or you just want to talk to somebody about what's going on in regular life. Either way, BetterHelp can be that help for you. Therapy can be different for every single person, and most of us have bigger problems than just our favorite sports team, and it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be very flexible, suited to your schedule, and all you have to do is visit betterhelp.com forward slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com forward slash locked on NBA. <sighs> all Open Bulls up. fans are probably going to need better help when this season's over with. This has been, this has been an emotionally abusive season, man. Um, but the Atlanta Hawks stage a huge comeback against the Boston Celtics to win the game. Close the gap on the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls now only have a one and a half game lead over the Atlanta Hawks with 10 games left on the season. Pat, I'm going to present this question to you. Do the Bulls even hold on to the ninth seed? I do think they do. Um, I think that they... Atlanta's got some Atlanta's got a little bit more interesting games coming up on their schedule than I think the Bulls do. Although I guess the Bulls have three games against the Knicks and they got a game against against Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I still believe that they can, but the Bulls do have a little bit of an uphill thing where things could fall completely the wrong direction for them. I'll say that, right? If you end up losing to Atlanta, who's a team that seems like they're getting a lot healthier as the season comes to a close, you don't have Trey Young right now. But even if you do end up, right, like that, that would be the matchup that you're playing. He may be able to get back for the play in game if that's something that he that they want to rush him back for. If they want to be in the play in tournament, right? They're probably like, let's get out of here. Let's take this else. This might be the first play in year where you see a bunch of teams going, nah, go ahead. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, if we're being real, outside of Miami, yeah. Philly probably don't want to win that bad. Um, who, who else keeps falling into it? I mean, if Indiana gets in there, Indiana may end up wanting to get out of it. But outside of that, it's the Bulls in Atlanta. You're going to see literal games of like, come on, dog. Don't you just want to win this one, man? Win it for me, dog. I'm trying to get Terrence Shannon Jr., man. I don't want the win. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. This is... uh. Will they hold on to the ninth seat? Who knows? Can they hold on to the ninth seat? I do believe that they should be able to, but we'll see what it ends up being. Yeah, I mean, the Bulls have the have the ability to do anything. That's the thing that's, that pisses everybody off about this team. We know that they can. I would not be surprised at all. For example, we got 10 games left. The Bulls win six to seven out of these last 10 games. They hold on to the ninth seed. They turn around. They make it out the playing tournament and then lose uh, in four games to the Boston Celtics. That's the exact way this could go. And then then the team that gets the lottery the, the lottery balls that the Bulls would have had had they not made the made it out the playing tournament, that's the team that ends up getting a top three pick. That's just the way that it goes for Chicago Bulls fans. That's, that's our destiny. Or would it be even worse if we miss the play-in and then this is the draft that we get the number one overall pick in the week in a week draft? Oof. Number one overall, though. Who who? Uh. I wouldn't be mad at it. While it's I a mean, weak draft, you I get think to you evaluate could do all the talent with the number one point. overall. You see, you think what? I think you could do something with the number one overall this year. I think there's enough good players that people would believe in. Where even if you hate, it, even if you were like, let's just trade out and go get Terrence Shannon Jr. or something like that, where you want somebody lower on in the draft. Um, I think that you could still go out and get a maybe get some future capital, maybe rebuild some of your draft capital going into the next season and still be able to get a player. I know we don't see that as much in the NBA, but uh, I mean, who's number one? Zach Eady? Zach Eady, the first overall pick? Eady? No, Eady's not, not even going to be drafted. What are you talking about? Don't you know, don't watch man. much college, college basketball, do you, brother? I watch Illinois in the tournament. I was about to say you. You just talk about Edie as the number one overall pick. You I don't. I, no, I don't. I don't tune in. I, I've never said. I, I watch Illinois, and that is it. <laughs> and, and that is why I do not cover Illinois. I don't do a draft breakdown until it is time to do draft breakdown. And I'd be looking at these mugs like he had been pretty nice. He'd be like, yeah. He was like, no, I don't watch. No. Why? How much? How, how? Why do I have to say this every year? I don't know. You surprised me. 
every year because it's like last year you talk about Imani Bates being a low first round pick, and I'm just like, what are we talking about? Oh, uh, 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 hey, Imani Bates. Well, no, he he ain't played at all. Um, <laughs> that's kind of odd though. He was hooping, and then they were just like, mm, a little too gutty for me. <laughs> Too Jamarant for me. We're gonna we're gonna drop you off here. Uh no, I just I love that I have to do this every year. You don't watch much college basketball, do you? No. <laughs> I watch professionals play. Oh my god, man. I watched hilarious. this tournament and Zach Eady been balling. Zach Eady's not gonna get drafted. No, bro. Zach Eady's really? not gonna get drafted, bro. Like, no, it's Kofi Coburn 2.0. No, he There's got nothing. way better footwork than Kofi. No, he does not, bro. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. No, he does not. And that, or and he's, he's had it in, not, in every game I've seen. He's not switchable. He's a high IQ basketball player. Don't get me wrong, but Zach Eady ain't getting drafted, bro. Oof, this is, this is not. That's he looked mm-hmm. good in the tournament. I don't know if nobody right, he looks great in this tournament. tournament. <laughs> he looks great in the tournament, bro. Great. <laughs> so who's the number one pick right now? Right now, it's either Cody Williams. Uh, it's probably going to be the number one pick right now. Uh, yeah, him and the guy out of France. Those are those are two guys that are at the top of the draft. We don't even know the guy out of France's name. <laughs> it's Zachier, Zach, Zach, Zachier. I believe that's oh, how you pronounce it. Is. Okay, my bad. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, I actually do know. Who that I was going to say, I think I'm pretty sure you know who he is. So. I probably know more about it. I just don't care about it. Like it, it's it's one of those drafts where it's like, is was anybody spectacular? No. Um. Go get Terrence Shannon Jr. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> I like my guys. I wouldn't be mad at a second round Coleman Hawkins either. No, I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. It really depends. Like, I wish the Bulls had us. I actually wish they did have a second round pick in this draft because I, I this is one of those drafts where I would love to see them go best player available in the first round. And then you can get a you can get a big like Donovan Klingon in the second round. I, I know he has he has a, he has a not not necessarily the highest floor either, but like he's somebody that you could definitely take a look at. Um, Khalil Ware is a player that could fall to the second round as well. What, what are we talking? That's how bad this game is. We're we're starting our draft coverage a month early. That's, that's uh, well, I'm not because I ain't watching none of these months except the months <laughs> that's in the tournament. I'm telling you, I got like I got like 17 names and they all played in the tournament, and apparently half of them ain't getting drafted. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Send it Zach Eady going number one overall. Oh, man. It's time to get out of here, Pat. Send us home, brother. Hey, man. Follow us on everything at Locked Up Boys. You can follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. Appreciate y'all for tuning in to Show and Love, man. And uh, apparently, Zach Eady will not be going first overall. I mean, 19 and 8, bro. That's not bad. Like, what? He's had good footwork in all the games I've seen. I swear he has. I literally looked at him. It was like, well, he's not Kofi. That's literally the word. <laughs> yeah. I literally was Bro, when, when, when you you know it's bad when when they're doing a draft analysis and they said, oh, well, why is Zach Eady not on the draft board? And then their response was, well, maybe Zach Eady does get drafted if you, if you plan on playing him six minutes in the first half, six minutes in the second half, and commit to playing 12 minutes of old school basketball each game, then you draft Zach Eady. Oh, so he's going to be a bull. Bro, <laughs> you can follow me at CEO Hayes. You can follow us at Locked on Bulls. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Locked on Bulls is free and available on every podcasting app and platform of your choice, as well as YouTube for Pat the Designer. I'm Hayes. This has been Locked on Bulls, man. This, we out. Y'all pray. Yeah, Shannon Jr., man. <laughs> That's all. Zach Eady, number one overall. I've heard it all. Bro, he averaged 24 and 12. I thought that was like... That was a lot for my head. Got a long forehead, though. I will say that. He does look like he wore a helmet at some point in this thing. (laughs) (laughs) Jaleel Okafor type.